Welcome to Red Fracture TV. I, as always, am your host, Sean Chappell. Welcome to week 18 of my online journal. So much has happened last week. So let's just skip the preamble and jump right in, shall we? It seems that people are finding me on the net and my visitors have picked up a few more of my original art pieces. It appears that <clears throat> all my work on Google My Business and Red Fracture is starting to pay off. This time I sold a small painting to a customer right here in Cambridge and I was able to uh, drop it off myself, say thanks in person and have a bit of a discovery conversation about the sale and about my customer. Bonus, super nice lady, by the way, as well. Really awesome. She showed me around her house, showed me all of her horror pictures, showed me her horror collection of novels, books, movies, memorabilia. I found a fan and it was awesome. It was great. Thank you, Donna, for inviting me in. Also, another two paintings have gone out to Quebec to the same gent who purchased a ton of work off my website in January. This time he scored one of my favorite pieces. It's all about the perceived evils of being introverted, and I affectionately titled it, The Grim Spectre of Introversion Puts Down Its Book Long Enough to Look Perturbed. Or, hi, my name is Andy Social. I painted this piece in retaliation for the conflation of introversion and antisocial personality disorder. Introverts are quiet and gain energy from solo pursuits. Antisocialists want to see the world burn very different paths in life. I painted this character with no mouth, a very large brain-like protrusion coming out of his head, and a propensity for books. I'd like to think us introverts are a rather clever breed. Although I didn't intend it, he even looks like he's wearing a turtleneck. Very uppity indeed. Another unintentional design choice was the shape of the hand holding the book. He's inadvertently giving the viewer the middle finger. <laughs> I suppose some subconscious ire worked its way into this piece. That'll learn ya for calling me antisocial. Honeybomb officially has a bank account. Uh, we're going to need one for the Kickstarter campaign when we launch the game in May and for continued sales after the campaign is finished. Gots to get paid. All three of the Ramstar Games team members, that being myself, Kit, and Sabrina, headed on down to the BMO to get it set up. We met up with Gordon, a super nice account manager there, and after an hour and a half, you wouldn't believe the amount of paperwork involved, we had a partnership bank account set up for Honeybomb. One of the lessons that comes up in many of my financial guru books is making room for the money you want to come into your life. This can be accomplished in part by opening up a new bank account into which all of your new mad money will be deposited. We have high hopes for Honeybomb. The project is sticking along quite nicely. Soon, we'll be pushing hard on getting the word out to prospective supporters. We're really looking forward to seeing the campaign come to fruition and for our new bank account to feel like a turkey on Thanksgiving. Stuffed. Last but not least, uh, Kitty and I took advantage of an afternoon off to go meet up with a couple of fine artistic gentlemen in Toronto, Rob Croxford and Todd Lawson. We had also hoped to hit up the AGO for their magic history exhibit, but the damn museum closed at 5 p.m. This is Toronto, people, and they closed at 5 p.m. Things stay open later in Cambridge. Anywho, we met up with Rob first at his new studio in North York. For those of you not in the know, his old studio burned down. About a week before we met him, at the Toronto Outdoor Art Fair. Yikes. He still pulled off the fair with aplomb. And if there's one quality Rob has, it's aplomb. He was painting up a storm, getting ready for a new exhibit coming up in April at the One of a Kind Show and Sale in Chicago. Yep, Rob is stepping up his game, getting just a little bit uncomfortable and taking a big leap into the American market. For this, I applaud him. 
In so many of the texts I've read, they say all the big changes in your life, the ones that will lead to the biggest growth opportunities are the ones that make you really uncomfortable. I'm sure he's going to do awesome because his work is awesome and you should all go visit him in North York and buy a print from his studio shop. Next to be visited was the AGO. Oh, no, wait, it closed at 5 p.m. After burning an hour, strolling around a mall and boring ourselves stiff, we headed downtown to meet up with Todd Lawson at the Elaine Fleck Gallery on Queen Street West. After feeding ourselves some falafel balls and samosas from a conveniently located Alibaba's best Middle Eastern food in T.O., we headed into the show and were quite surprised to see that the show itself was a smorgasbord of styles and mediums. I thought it was all going to be similar to Todd's piece, Woody. Uh, but there was designerly abstract, art brute mixed media, photography of rusty old shipping boats, and some very nice drawings of what looked like Greek and or Roman architecture. Like I said, smorgasbord. We had the chance to chat with Todd and his lovely wife, Ella Savitt, uh, briefly and catch up after so many years. Todd and I were in a class at Sheridan together back in 2001. And then we showed together in Hamilton at the Dia de los Muertos group show. That is where I met the fantabulous Kit Davin. She wouldn't leave me alone that night, and she hasn't every night since. Thanks, Todd. If you get a chance to get down to the Elaine Fleck Gallery, Give it a whirl and see the show. There's definitely something in it for everyone since it hits on just about every type of visual arts expression that there is. Oh, and another note about Todd Lawson. He'll be having a solo show at the very same gallery coming up in June. From our conversation, it sounds like a very tight deadline, but I know he can do it. You bet Kitty and I are gonna be going to the opening. We'll see you there, Todd. Be patient. This is different from my earlier advice of everything will take longer than you think. This is less about getting antsy over the length of time it takes to complete a, a, a task or certain tasks and more about breathing through your anxiety over the length of time it takes to reach a very large goal. I've recently come up against this in my own adventures with Red Fracture. I'm really champing at the bit to see the printed product side of Red Fracture take off, even in a minimal way. I get online every day, check out my Google Analytics to see how many people came by the site, check out MailerLite to see how many people signed up for my newsletter, and ultimately how many people made a purchase of printed items off my website. I'm usually met with the same results day after day, and it can be a bit tough to keep your chin up when you're running any business that requires regular sales. This is where patience comes in. I have to continually remind myself that I've only been running Red Fracture full-time now for about four months. Rome wasn't built in a day and neither will Red Fracture be. I have to keep reinforcing in my mind that the process is organic, that it takes time to build a following uh, to get the word around and to get to know who my customers are, for them to get to know me and for me to trust that all the work I'm doing will continue to build towards success. I can't rush the process. I'll just make a sloppy mess of things and that helps no one. Remembering to breathe and remembering why I decided to do this in the first place really helps to take the edge off my impatience-induced anxiety when it rears its ugly head. And it does come up quite a bit. I'm an Aries. I want everything yesterday. This topic also comes up in Jen Sincero's book, You Are a Badass at Making Money. She states quite clearly that urgency is fine. Moving with purpose and determination is what you want. But rushing comes from lack, from a sense of fear and desperation that you're missing out or that there's not enough to go around. And this leads to you pushing things away with the frenetic energy that you're giving out. Be patient. It's a hard practice to master, but master it, you must. Stay focused on what you're trying to achieve and have faith that everything will fall into place. 
whatever you're building will grow. It's in the very fabric of the universe for things that are in motion to keep on moving. But don't rush. That is how accidents happen. One last thing. If you like the content of this video, or you have an idea for something you'd like me to talk about, please leave me a note in the comments below. Uh, don't be afraid to share this video on social media as well to your friends and family if you think that what I'm talking about is pertinent to them. And also, if you'd like to be the very first people to get notifications about when I drop a new video, don't be afraid to subscribe. When I get to 100 subscribers, I get my own personalized Red Fracture URL. Won't that be nice? Ooh. For now, that is all. Thanks for watching.